Hey everyone, this is going to be a video about pets and other animals. <laughs> um, so I made a little list of the different things that I want to talk about. Um, now I know that I'm able to talk to animals and things, but I just wanted to clarify some things about that maybe some misnomers or some misunderstandings about that. There is a term in positive reinforcement, which I used to be a positive reinforcement animal trainer um, while I was in the corporate world for a long time. And then I became a positive reinforcement animal trainer and I had a pet parenting program that was pretty, pretty extensive. Um, and then um, I turned into a pet psychic, you know, because I realized I kind of had to come out of the closet about being able to talk to them because uh, while I was in my sessions with them, they were kind of telling on their parents, the animals were kind of telling me things that their parents weren't telling me. So um, that's kind of how that happened in, in kind of my background a little bit. But anyway, in positive reinforcement animal training, there is a term called anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism is when people think that their animals know but they're, that they're human beings. They basically think that they're human beings so that they know right from wrong. They know the, the things that they should do and that they shouldn't do. And it's just not true. You, usually you go grab your animal out of an environment that they're already in, whether it be outdoors or you know maybe they even show up at your door. But for the most part, the animal didn't ask to come into your life. You just brought them in your home and then expected them to be a certain way without even bothering to teach them a lot of you. Um, some of you who put in the time, that, that's awesome. But most people put in the bare minimum. They just try to see if their animal will act right in their environment without any interference on their part, you know. But um, your animal does not know right from wrong. Your animal doesn't know what to do and what's not okay and what isn't what is okay and what's not okay. Any of that, you guys have to show your animal that. Um, so you have to give them um, you have to give them some type of a I don't know like like a feedback. You got to give your animal feedback. Yes, this I like that I do not like. Just like in a relationship, you know that kind of thing. And other than that, your animal is not going to have a clue as to how to behave. They just hope that you're not going to get upset with them about something. Even if you come through the door and there's garbage all over the floor and your animal looks, looks guilty, right? Um, it doesn't mean that your animal actually feels guilty. Your animal probably is just afraid of you because they've seen a mess on the floor before and they've seen you get angry. So it's that they're afraid that you're going to attack them and yell at them just like you did the last time. But do they two put? Do, they don't put two and two together to say that it was them putting the garbage on the floor that caused you to have that look on your face and come through the door and be ticked off at them. So don't be a lazy pet owner. If your animal seems to be misunderstanding or stubborn, it's not true. It's, it's that they don't quite understand what you're asking of them and you need to make it more clear. Now, I always, um, I'm an advocate of the positive reinforcement training. Um, back when I started getting into German shepherds, you know, I really, I really love those types of dogs. Um, but I didn't want them to be, you know, they're, they're like an aggressive, considered an aggressive dog breed. So I didn't want to, um, you know, I didn't want to get in, you know, have a, have a dog attack somebody or attack me or one of my family members or whatever, you know. So I thought of positive reinforcement as a way to like build a bond of trust with you and that animal to where... You know, it's like if you hit them or you punish them or you're always yelling at them, you're going to, they're just not going to trust you. They may do as you say, but they're not going to feel good about you ultimately. And you want them to trust you in order to have your back or to really listen to you in, in an emergency. So I wanted to share a little bit of a story about how effective positive reinforcement really is. Now, I will say this caveat, you got to be smart as a human being. You got to be smarter than your animal in order for positive reinforcement to work actually for any training to work. 
And that's, I think, the thing that really hurts people's egos is that they're usually not smart enough to do it, <laughs> you know, because you got to put in the research. You got to you got to be good with the clicker. You have to have the timing right. You've got all of that stuff. But no, it does not make them dependent on treats. Any of you who believe that just, again, you don't know what you're doing. Um, you can you and I. I know <laughs> because after I trained my German Shepherds, they needed no treats at all whatsoever. And they were completely 100% reliable in their commands. So, um, but here's an example, like uh, my husband at the time uh, was poo-pooing the idea thinking, oh, that doesn't work. I've heard that doesn't work. Um, of course, back then I didn't realize the dark side was trying to, you know, instill people with ideas like that because positive reinforcement actually really does work. It's quite powerful. So, um, because it does build trust and rapport. Anyway, so we had we had our dog Loba, um, a German Shepherd. Like she she was out. My husband was washing the vehicle out in our yard, out in our driveway, a gravel driveway. And she was laying around, and she was she was like Lassie, like she was a super 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 sweet dog. And she was just kind of hanging around though. And a biker went by, and neither of us noticed because we were in conversation. Um, that she had taken off after this guy on the bike. And um, I called out to her. Um, one time I yelled her name and said, come. And she skidded on her heels. Like she was this close to getting the guy's ankle. I don't even know if she would have, you know, bit him or anything. I doubted. She was just having a lot of fun. She was just awfully close to him though. The guy was scared to death, but I yelled her name and said, come, the way that I'd been teaching her. And she pivoted and ran back, wagging her tail, excited to come back home. Now, the reason being, um, when you, you have to make the animal or, or try to encourage them to want to do what it is that you want them to do by rewarding it. So a command that is really... Um, that is really a difficult, uh, something that's super, super important for them to do, like come, you need to say it in such a tone that you mean it like you would in an emergency. So uh, don't say it fluffy. Don't say it like, you know, wishy-washy, like be like, come. Um, and the reason is because you want them to listen to you in an emergency. You know, that's the most important time for them to listen to you. So basically I had her like on a, on a long lead and I would make sure that if I say it one time, she was going to come to me because um, you do not want to say a command and have them not do it. You're teaching them not to do it then. Okay. So I would say, come like that. And then I would, then I would pull her in if she didn't come immediately. Um, and then you just do that repeatedly. And then when she gets to you and when she got to me, I would give her like a piece of steak or peas, frozen peas absolutely would do anything for peas. <laughs> peas and steak were her thing. Um, and you want to give them only that jackpot treat for that really super important command. So when we were teaching sit or down or anything else that was like could care less really, I mean, they, she could do it and it was helpful if she did, but life or death matter type commands, they need to be jackpot. They need to get the jackpot for doing it. So basically she got a little piece of steak and, um, and, and or peas whenever she would come immediately when we would yell come, I would yell come. He didn't really do any training. So um, that's kind of how the, that's kind of how I worked on it. And then another guy, thing that you guys should know that a lot of people don't realize is even if your dog, like say you've been teaching your dog sit right beside you um, if you, if you teach the dog sit right beside you, the dog is not going to know sit out in front of your house. It's not going to know sit in the middle of a party with a bunch of people around. It's not going to go and know sit if you're up in your bedroom asking her to sit. Um, if you're outside on the sidewalk, if you're in a store, wherever you are with the dog um, or the animal, um, they need to know the command in every different atmosphere. So there's three Ds in, in, in positive reinforcement animal training. There's distance, duration, and distractions. So you teach them the command with a lot of distractions, like noise like that going on. <laughs> you know, you up the ante, you kind of get them used to more and more and more distractions while they're doing the command and they get, they learn to master it. They learn to really get what you're asking them to do 
And then unless you've mastered the three Ds, they, they're not really going to know the command. They, they kind of like, sometimes we'll do it, but other times they'll just be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm confused. This is a totally different scenario. <laughs> um, so duration would be increasing the amount of time that they're doing it. So you ask, you ask your dog to sit and she sits for a minute and gets right back up. And then it's like, you know, ask her to stay put for five seconds, 10 seconds, a minute, two minutes, three minutes, five. And you very slowly build up over time for her to that you ask her to go sit or go lay down in her bed. She'll stay there for an hour. You know, if you're like, if you have, a, you're at a picnic and there are a bunch of kids running around and they really need to be able to do their Easter egg hunt without the dog getting in the way or trying to grab the balls and run or whatever, you know, it's. Or if you want a peaceful night without your dog bagging, you want it to go lay down on its bed and stay there um, to not make anybody un uncomfortable, whatnot. So you teach them direct duration. That would be duration and distractions. So people there, people not there, people in you know, all the different situations. And then um, distance would be the other thing. So now at distance, you might want to actually incorporate hand signals so that if your dog is clear across the park, you can say this and your dog will come, come. So that what you do is you say it at the same time, or you can say come or whatever is natural for you, whatever you think you would do to your dog naturally. If you wanna slap your, your legs and say come, you know, then that would be it. Or sit or down or whatever you want the hand signal to be, do it at the same time that you're using the verbal command so that the dog gets both at the same time. So that if they're far away, then they're still going to listen to your command and do as you as you ask. Um, again, most of this is for life or death matters, like very important situations that you didn't even know were going to come up in the future. Just plan out and think out how you could get them away from something. Now, it's very also very typical that an animal would be drawn to, um, you know, some toxic materials um, like the green stuff in your car, you know, that tastes really good and is really sweet. Um, if your animal were to find that and you were across the way, they ran across to the neighbor's house and they were kind of snooping around and there was oil and there was stuff all over the 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 driveway and they were friendly with the neighbor and the neighbor said, hey, you know, pets your dog and everything's all cute and everything. But all of a sudden then your dog starts licking some stuff or looks like it's snooping around some stuff that you think would be really bad for it. You want to be able to yell the dog's name to get its attention and say, look, you know, you could say, look, you teach them how to lick you in the eyes, even from across the way, distance, distractions, you know, those two are both in that situation. Um, and then you could say, you know, in the case of Loba, Loba, look, and then she would look over at you and then you would say, come, and she would get out of that situation. Or you could say, leave it, Loba, look, leave it. It's almost like the sign language, right? It starts to become like a language between you and your animal. Loba, look, leave it. And she was like that too. I could take her anywhere. And she was like totally on command. Um, she, we'd go through a pet store and she would be sniffing in the different bins um, and whichever one, you know, I'd be like, which one looks good to you right now? And she'd sniff all the different ones. And then, and then she would, if she went to gobble it, I'd say, leave it, leave it. And she'd wait and she'd sit, you know, and I'd say, okay. And when I said, okay, she could go grab it and eat it. One, you know, and then I'd grab, you know, buy a bunch of them. But, um, you know, you can, you, that's, that's what it takes, you guys. It takes effort. It takes effort. Also, an important thing with animals, whether you're any kind of animal that you're talking about, like it could be spiders, it could be, you know, squirrels, it could be a chinchilla, a gerbil, a cat, whatever it is, um, whatever you're dealing with, learn about its behavior, learn about its body language. Absolutely important. If you've never watched a video on dog body language or cat body language, in our society with as many dogs and cats as there are around, um, seriously, you guys got to look into that. You got to look into it. It's so important because you got to be able to tell what's on the dog or a cat's mind. And they are pretty obvious about the way that they feel. If you watch their tail, if you watch their ears and things like that. For example, um, Annie, um, if you, if you're petting her, um, it, you know, if you, a lot of people don't know this, but if you, if you rub a cat from head to tail, it's, it can be overstimulating for them energetically. And it's like they get the static and then they have to do something with it. So that they'll have to bite something or they'll have to run it off or swat at you or 
something like that, right? There, it's it's too much. It's too much for them to handle. But we love petting them that way. So a compromise that I make with Annie, she'll cuddle me right there at that table, and she'll lay in my arms and be all sweet, and I'll just oh I can't take it. I have to pet you, you know. And so I'll just pet her and pet her, and I brush. I need to brush her every day, otherwise her fur gets all over the place. So um, I do it to get her excess fur out. So, and that's another thing with long, long furred animals, long haired animals, you gotta be brushing them on a regular basis or they'll get mats and the mats actually really hurt them, you guys. It really hurts them. So please don't do that to them. Um, so anyway, brush your animal on a regular basis. But with her, I have like a little, um, it's, a, it's a little rubber Coca-Cola can. <laughs> I have it up on the table. So that when she gets overstimulated, I just put the can in front of her and she bites on it. She, she bites it or, she, or otherwise she'll bite whatever's around or me, <laughs> you know? So, but now that she loves me like she does and she trusts me like she does, she, she, she really tries not to bite me because she knows that it hurts me and she, she doesn't want to hurt me. So she'll bite other objects around. Um, another thing that people don't realize it, is that they need to, and they can desensitize their animals. So desensitizing, oh, and I was gonna say with, with Annie about the body language thing, just to go back to that real quick, um, is an animal's tail, like a cat's tail at least, when it's irritated or it's had too much or it's about to move, the tail moves. Otherwise the tail is perfectly still. And, it, and if she's relaxed, it's, it's like this. If she thinks, oh, a friend, then the tail goes up. And, you know, again, if, if she's just kind of chill, relaxed, the tail will be kind of more like this. If she's not happy, the tail goes down or like trepidatious or anything like she's like, mm, her tail will be down, any cat. Um, I, I say her just generally speaking, obviously. Um, so if her tail starts going like this, it's like, it's time to do something. You got to change something up. You got to stop petting her or petting your animal, or you got to move the animal or get it out of the situation or whatever. And if you're a conscientious owner, you're going to be paying attention to those subtle things. And if you like, normally, if you don't have a kid running around your house and your, and your animals aren't used to kids, uh, you'll be able to tell what your animal is feeling and thinking about the child by by watching the tail and the and the ears and so you gotta you gotta pay close attention to that as well as your own children you gotta watch your children's body language too so um, be studying that type of of stuff um, desensitization okay so um, if your animal is acting aggressive, then they are afraid. They're not actually mean. They're not violent. They are afraid. So whatever it is that they are afraid of, you need to back your animal away from it, a long ways away from it. So whatever, however it's reacting, like say they're this close and there's this all this, uh, all this angst and barking and all this crazy stuff going on, then back it up here and see what the animal's reaction is. You, what you're looking for is for your animal to just be curious. There will be a distance that's large enough that your animal is, is gonna look at it and just be like, huh, it kind of looks like it could be another dog. I'm not quite sure. And when they do that, then you need to click and treat them immediately while they're showing the curiosity. And then you're so you're gonna encourage that behavior and you want to use probably a jackpot treat for something like that so that you can really get their attention. You want to have taught them the look command first so that you can get their attention on you away from what they're looking at. You can get it on you and be like, look, good girl. Is that a dog? And they look again, look, good girl. Oh, what a good girl. You give them the treat. So they start to go, oh, yeah, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. A new dog arrives on the scene. OK. And you can use this with people, too, by the way. If you have a partner who's really sensitive about a certain subject, same thing. You just think about how you can make them feel special when that new thing comes on the scene or when this thing happens or when they're, you know, if they go somewhere outside their comfort zone, why wow, you're handling this so well, you're doing so great. I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. You know, like really encourage your person in that atmosphere so that they start feeling more comfortable and not so on edge about whatever the thing is. So um, what you'll do is you'll, you'll get to where everything that they react to like that is at a distance and then you praise it and, and then you, you, you close in the distance a little bit. So it's the opposite of the, of the way you train them with the distance thing. 
if you're desensitizing them, you want to get them far away and then very slowly build to them coming closer. And eventually you will make that, you, it'll happen. Um, an example of something like right in your home that can happen is this one gal, um, her dog would attack the vacuum cleaner every time she started to vacuum, so she couldn't even vacuum. It was a big problem. So what we did is we took the vacuum cleaner out and, um, and we put the vacuum cleaner at the end of the hallway. So the dog really just kind of looked over at it and just wasn't really alarmed yet. So we, we clicked and treated. When the dog made eye contact with the object, we clicked and treated and said, good girl, good girl. Look, it's the vacuum cleaner. It's the vacuum cleaner, you know, got her curious. And hmm, okay, my owner's talking positive. My owner seems happy about the vacuum cleaner being here. You know, they pick up on your tones too. You can't act scared of whatever it is because then they're really going to, they're going to be like, oh, all wanting to protect you. If you were to be like, oh, 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 okay, let's take out the vacuum cleaner. Okay. Oh, she just looked at it. You know, the dog's going to be like, what, what, you know? So, oh, the vacuum cleaner. Oh, okay, good, good. And then give her a treat, encourage her, let her know you're confident that you trust the vacuum. Um, and then we, we got the vacuum cleaner closer and closer and closer until the dog didn't really care. Um, and then we brought it away again, and then we turned it on. And then the dog was like, oh, oh this is a whole other level. You know, again, with that distance, duration, distractions kind of thing, upping the ante, um, turn, up, turn the vacuum cleaner on, the dog had a reaction, but it still wasn't aggressive. If, if the dog were to act aggressive at that point, we would, we would know that we have to put more distance in between the object and the animal, okay? So... That's how you know you've gotten too close too fast is that they'll turn aggressive again. So just back it off, back it off and start again. You might have to back it off even further and then build back up again if you, if you went too fast. So um, yeah, so then we, we turned the vacuum cleaner on and then we got it closer and closer. But we worked up, we probably worked for like, a, we only did it for like a couple of hours. I, I don't even think I had to make more than one visit. So um she, I, once I taught her all of this, she, she went away and, or I went away <laughs> and she continued to work on it. She reported like a week later, she goes, oh my God, Amy, it worked like a charm. In fact, she looks forward to the vacuum cleaner coming out. Like I bring it out of the closet and she gets excited and she follows me around while I vacuum. <laughs> you know, you can do that with animals that walk by on the sidewalk. You know, you can, they, they start, um, it was the be diligent, you know, so you got to watch dog shows up on the scene and your dog just looks over, catch it. That's where that timing comes in. You got to catch it and click it and be like, good girl. Good. Look at a new dog, a neighbor, a neighbor dog. Yay. You know, and just kind of build up. So um, those are just some quick tips on, on training in itself. Um, okay, so in terms of communication with your animals, some people think that like, you can just tell like, that they that somebody can you can just go to like an animal trainer, like I am an animal communicator, pet psychic, whatever you want to call it is just one of the things that I do. Um, they think that you that they can come to somebody like me, and I'm going to say, you should stop barking at that object. And all of a sudden, the dog's going to be like, Oh, I get it now. Okay, now that I've listened to a pet psychic, I'll just obey. It doesn't work like that. All animals have like a built-in instinct too. So you're working against that instinct and they also have free will. So if they are really, if they think that what they're thinking is smarter than what you're thinking, they're not going to listen to you. They're not gonna, they're going to protect themselves. No, 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 no. You can't tell me that that great Dane coming down the street is a good thing. Like, no, no, <laughs> you can't tell me that, you know, Whatever they're afraid of, they're pretty convinced of it or whatever, you know. So it takes that training to do it. You got to, you got to train it and you got to work with them. You can do, to um, animals work in terms of telepathy, but they also talk from the heart. Um, and so they see the images that you have in your mind. So if you want them to behave, then you need to be projecting an image of them sitting still watching an animal go by on the sidewalk, for example, like be like, this is how I want you to behave. This would just make me feel so special if you could just sit and watch instead of barking, you know, or if you could just like, just communicate from the heart, the animals, they, they really feel with their heart. They have a fairy guardian angels. Every animal has a fairy, fairy guardian angel. 
So um, just they, they're very, very heart centered. Um, not that all fairies are heart centered. Some of them are kind of egoic, but um, so try to communicate from the heart, like really from the heart uh, is when your animal is going to hear you the most. Um, try also to get some communication back. Like, what is it that makes you, what are you so afraid of with that animal? Whatever comes to you, trust that. Um, and you don't need a professional to tell you what's going on, but it does, it can help to confirm it, at least confirm things for you that you've already probably felt, I bet. Um, so try that communication. I just had, um, I experimented with a friend of mine earlier, uh, we were on Zoom, and I told her that one time Nala curled up, uh, she's done it twice, curled up in my arms while I was like sitting at the table or something when my arms are up like this, and she came and curled up. The second time that she had done it, um, I scooted my arms over or something to try to make her feel more comfortable, but she misunderstood it and thought I was trying to, to scoot her away from me. And I could see the look on her face was like, like so hurt. Like, you don't want me to lay in your arms. And I, and I felt so bad. And I just was like looking at her like, no, that's not what I meant. You know, I did. I, that's not what I was trying to do. I was just try, actually trying to make you feel more comfortable by adjusting my arms and you know, is this big misunderstanding? She never did it again. And it's broken my heart. I actually got emotional telling my friend about this. I was just like, you know, I feel so bad because now I feel like sometimes she wants to come back around and try it again, but she's all nervous. So I said, why don't you experiment like talking to her right now? Just, just tell her that that incident, you know, tell her what was really up, what was going on. I was actually trying to make her feel more comfortable, blah, 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 blah. So, and while she did that, I thought I would look at the tarot cards. I had them in my hand like this. And I, so I was like, okay, go ahead and talk to her, go ahead and tell her. And so she just totally got in her heart and she's like, Nala, honey, your mama loves you so much and she would never hurt you. And she, she did that back then because she wanted to make you feel more comfortable. And she was just talking very, very sweetly to her. And I could see Nala reacting. Her ears were doing this, like I'm listening. She wasn't look, she wasn't turning around looking at the at the video, but she was totally tuned in listening. And I could see her body kind of she was breathing a little bit heavy. And I was like, whoa. And I was looking at her cards. I was like, okay, okay. She you could see it was amazing. Cause I, I would go like this while she was talking to her and I would show her like what she was feeling. I would go like this. And so she, she'd go, oh, you know, and then she would play on that. She would talk to her about that. Oh, you want to heal things with your mama and you want to offer her your love, don't you? And then she, when she would say that, I would go like this. She, I want to come together and bring her in from out in the cold and stop putting her out in the cold like that. She'd go, yeah, Nala, you really want to, you know, you really want to show your mama how much you love her, don't you? You know, and then I would um, show her this you know, would be the next set of cards. Like she wanted to apologize and offer her love and, and that she was burdened. You know, it's like the whole time it was so fun to, you guys could try this if you know the tarot or if you have any kind of uh, scrying tools or any kind of divination tools, it's incredibly helpful. And if you ever just, just randomly do it right now, if you have an animal and you have a tarot deck or an Oracle deck or anything like that, just randomly say like, let's take a look at how Annie's feeling about me right now. Um, but experiment it like <laughs> she's wanting to, she wants, she wants to come over here and give me a little heartfelt expression. <laughs> That's cute. How is Nala feeling? I was just talking about Nala. So let's see how she's feeling about, about me right now. How's Nala feeling about me right now, please. Um, she's judging herself. She might, she might be hearing me communicating about judging her. She feels like I'm judging her. Yeah. Look at that. She's conflicted. Sweetheart, I wasn't, <laughs> like she's insecure. <laughs> oh, she went upstairs too. So, but this is how you can keep track of your animal and how they're feeling. Let me just talk to her in my head. Nala, honey, I wasn't, I wasn't judging you, sweetheart. I wasn't trying to make you look bad. I was just trying to help people understand how, how um, there are misunderstandings with animals and how we, how we have to, we have to take that time to talk from our hearts to you and tell you, you know, how we feel and find out, you know, just like with, with people to each other, we need to, to make sure there aren't any misunderstandings. There are hurt feelings. I love you. 
I do want to cuddle you. You did nothing wrong, honey. You did nothing wrong. I'm just using you as a good teaching example, sweetheart. See what I mean? Isn't that amazing? She, she's trying to be understanding and she feels like I'm a good nurturing mother who wants a happy family that I'm being really grounded and mature, which I was in that communication. Am I right? So, and she's, she's afraid, she's afraid to make that offer and come lay in my arms. She's still afraid of that for whatever reason, somebody may have um, not treated her so great. And so she, what I did to her kind of made her feel, oh, somebody rejected her. Oh, she used to love up on somebody and they would push her away. Like, get out of my face. Oh, oh, yeah, she wants to, um, oh, look at this. She was trying to get up the courage to be, to meet me at that grounded, mature energy. She wants to be that way too. And she wants to be a happy family together. She wants us to have our dreams come true together. So, you know, try, try not to jump to conclusions about your animal and why it's doing what it's doing. Use, use tools like that. Um, another tool would be to use your animals for scrying. Sometimes your animals will show you something that's actually going on between you and somebody else. So say you're on the phone talking to a girlfriend and you're talking about some kind of an issue or problem that you're having with that person. And then your cat goes over and um, takes something from you and runs with it. And you're like, you know, knowledge is stole, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then if you, if you are conscious enough and self-aware enough, you'll catch yourself in that moment wait a minute, I'm talking to my friend and we were wondering about whether I could trust that friend or not. And she just came and stole the mouse and ran with it. It's like, no, she's trying to steal something from you. She's trying to take something from you. You know what I mean? And then you can check the cards and say, is this friend tr indeed trying to, you know, take something from me? Or is she trying to, to trick me or manipulate me or whatever? And then you look at the cards and the cards confirm, yes, they, yes, she is not a good friend, uh, for example. Um, they, they might do it about if you're talking about nearly anything, or if you're even thinking about something, you could even be just on your couch, just contemplating and thinking, and then your animal comes in the, in the room and does something and they'll demonstrate for you either what you should do or what the other person involved might be thinking or doing, or, um, the other day, Nala did something really bold and brave and busted through my door, my bedroom door, and, uh, she was letting me know that my masculine is super determined. Like he'll stop at nothing. He'll bust through anything kind of feel. And um, it, because I was thinking about my masculine at that time or like around that time. So that these are all just really good examples of like, they're here to support us energetically. And they can also, especially, uh, well, the animals that live with us, dogs and cats, mostly it well, other animals can do it too, but they'll do energy work on you. A lot of times they will take on your stress and anxiety because they love you so much and they'll put it in their own bodies and they, they, want, they don't understand. I have to explain to them a lot when I'm talking to you guys doing, in, during remote readings. Um, animals usually will kind of flock around when I'm talking to you on Zoom or on the phone, your animals will start gathering. Um, it's usually because they have something to say or they just love the energy because I understand and get them. Um, but you could, you know, they'll, if they if I pick up on it and I see that they're not properly taking care of your energy and they're causing themselves to be ill because of it, they almost, they're willing to sacrifice themselves. They don't look at death the same way we do. They just know they can go die and they just come right back. It's like nothing to them. So, but what I like to do is teach them the proper way to heal. Um, yeah. And I think we're at that point. So, I am going to do a light language blessing right now. We're going to timestamp it. And you go ahead and you don't even worry if your animal's in the room or not, but I'm just going to, I'm going to teach and show your animal right now um, what to do. Oh, hang on a second before I go there. <laughs> I just duped you. No, but like if your, an, if, if your animal seems confused, like it doesn't know what to do in a particular situation, I'll use another case. Um, there was a pit bull that lived with the family and she would get very, very nervous and add to the stress of what was going on in their situation. If there was chaos or stress or crying or screaming or yelling or anything going on in the house that was 
dysfunctional or upsetting or whatever it is. The, the dog looked incredibly like panicked, like it didn't know what to do and it would be wandering around and it would go up to this person and go up to that person and like, what do I do? What do I do? And she would just really get in the way. So she was like, God, could you talk to my dog and just tell her like, and I was like, well, what do you want her to do in that situation? Do you want her to go lay down on a, on a bed? Do you want her to go outside? Like, what would you want? If you waved a magic wand, what would you want your dog to do? And she's like, I'd want her to go outside. And I was like, well, is the door usually open? She's like, well, sometimes, but not always. And I said, okay, then I will tell her that if you, if she's ever feeling like that, uncertain of what to do, then she needs to go to the door and let you know she wants outside. But you also have to be aware there's a situation escalating right now. So you need to go open up the door for her to go outside. And she was like, yeah, okay, I'll do that. So we had that little communication between her and her dog. Um, and I let the dog know if you start feeling uncertain again, just go to the door and, and ask to be let out kind of thing. And it totally worked. It totally worked. She said that, that never, the problem never happened again. It was, it was just incredible. And she said that she felt so bad because all she had to do was tell her dog what to do in that situation. And she hadn't taken the time to do that. So I always advise you guys during, during, during any kind of meal time, have your animals do something else, have you have them. Um, you know, you don't want them begging during your meals. So um, put them in a crate, put them on their bed or whatever to eliminate any kind of begging. Um, so, and also abandonment issues, a really big, big one, especially right now with everybody being home all the time. Try to separate yourself from your animals as much as possible. When you go to the bathroom, shut the door. When you go to bed, maybe shut the door, depending on the situation. Um, Make it a normal thing that you go outside and shut the door. At like everywhere that you go, sometimes shut the door and, and give them a treat or give them a Kong or, or if, if you need to just go out the door and right back in, out the door, right back in, out the door, right back in. If, they have, if they're really bad and they panic really, really bad and start barking or, or meowing and going crazy, then just go out for a very short period of time and come right back in and make it really normal, like no big deal, like going, opening the door and you going outside only means that you're gonna turn right back around and come back in. Have it mean something different. You going out the door and shutting the door doesn't mean you're gonna disappear for hours of the whole day anymore, right? So you, and then you build up, you build up the time, you build up the, the duration, you know, over a period of time. And eventually you can go out the door and you can be gone for a couple of hours and come back and they're asleep on the couch or whatever. So, all right, so let's do a blessing um, for your animals. And I'm just gonna um, kind of explain some normal human behavior to them and what they can do about it. And also show them how to help you heal or help transmute any kind of negative energy in their home for you guys. Now, typically dogs are physical protectors, although they're also telepathic, obviously. Everything is telepathic. <laughs> um, and that's kind of the natural way of things. So, but your, your, your dog is a physical protector more than the cats are more like psychic protectors, but cats can really be physical protectors too. I've seen them. So, um, okay. So we'll timestamp right now because we're going to start the blessing. Ama ma na ke in sa shi na a e ha ke e pomoma a. Now this is talking to even elephants and zebras. I feel like wild animals, bears. Like I see foxes. Like they're. I'm apparently they all want to know this too. Okay. Ama na ke in sa shi he na tai ke na ele shi ke pomoma a. They see us as being kind of erratic, uh, unpredictable sometimes. How emotional we can be. So um, I'm telling them you don't have to transmute their energy if you don't want to, but if you want to participate because you love that person or whatever, and we're ta again, talking to wild animals too, then you can definitely contribute. Let me see. Okay. <laughs> 
I took the energy off of you, kind of drained the negative energy down into the earth, not them, into the earth. And then it went bloop, 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 into like butterflies and bees. And they were like, whoa, really? <laughs> Um, and I'm explaining how everything is energy. So negative things can be turned into positive things, beneficial things. Just like 5G, just so you guys know, 5G energy is going to be turned from, um, from being harmful to being beneficial to you. Chemtrails, same thing. The, the, good, the good guys that are working behind the scenes are actually neutralizing the chemtrails and they are putting out beneficial things to us in the air now. So isn't that awesome? So I'm showing, I'm explaining this to these animals. All right, now some of them also were taking it personally. Sometimes if you get really angry, and you, you kind of like kick the cat, maybe not literally, but like, God, get out of my way or anything like that. If you've been acting kind of erratic, like they're talking about, they've been like afraid and they'll hide under something and they'll actually kind of be scared of you. Like, oh my God, they don't like me anymore. They don't even like, they'll think you don't even love them anymore for, for a minute. So I'm explaining to them, no, you just go, you just get away from them, get away from that energy, go into the bed or whatever you need to, but just take a nice little nap and don't take it personally. Don't even think about it. And if you go back to that person when they're in a better mood, they're going to be a lot nicer to you. You'll see they'll they'll, they'll continue to love you. Um, they may even apologize, and they're like, "Oh, okay, okay." So that it's like an ebb and a flow thing. Like, you know, they'll. Well, that just looked like an animal came down here, but then, oh, Nala. <laughs> I was gonna say I thought I saw an animal come down there, and then I didn't see her. Nala, sweetheart, do you want to come here? Come here, baby girl. Okay, so um So I'm showing them how a lot of animals use humor to help the person kind of get in a better mood and drop their ego or at least give them the opportunity to laugh and, and maybe not take themselves so seriously, just like children do, you know. Children are do the same thing, man. The parents will be acting like idiots, rah, 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 you know, and then the kids will come in and do something. And it's like, it's this awesome opportunity of the parents looking over at the kid and just laughing, just laughing. You got it. You got to have a sense of humor. You know, it's very important in life um, about anything, everything and anything. Everything should be funny to you guys. I mean, it should, you know, if you could just lighten up and have a sense of humor about things, th things just go so much better. And that really is the way of life, is humor. It's just, it, it is. It's just how, how life is. It's humorous. Um, and it's love. That's, that's love. That's coming from a loving place, if you can just laugh and let things go. Okay. Um, so I'm also explaining to them, if you do take it into your body, you can poop it out. You can poop it or pee it out. Like it's okay, like any other toxin, take it in your body and then just eliminate it um, out in the yard or whatever. I'm also, I just showed them when you're inside of a home, it is like a sacred space. You don't go potty in there. You go, you, you let your owner know somehow, however you can go over by a door, whine, whimper, cry, whatever. And you can go outside and eliminate out there unless, oh wait, the cats were just like totally confused for a second. They're like, wait a minute, I go to the bathroom in the house. Okay, no, no, no. Like if you have a box, if you have a box, you guys, it's, it's you go in that box. If your owner got you a box to go potty in or a pad or anything like that, then it's okay. Oh, they're all, oh, okay. Whew. <laughs> All right, so I was just making sure everybody feels okay. Everybody who, all the animals that were feeling into this video, they had an epiphany. They had some realizations as a result of that video. They're less scared. You know, they're, they're less worried. 
and they're like wanting to offer their love. They're wanting to love themselves, be more loving to themselves and be more loving to you as their owner. They're also seeing you as loving, nurturing a, a good mother. Uh, they're understanding better. Uh, wait, hang on. There was this was the next card. They they want to be harmonious with you and have that happy, emotionally fulfilling family. Is there anything else that the animals were feeling or needed to you know anything else that, you, that spirit wants to talk about in regards to the animals and that light language blessing, please? Okay, yeah. They well, some of them were feeling unworthy. Some of them were feeling okay. Let me talk to them about that too. Um, Cause sometimes I do, some, anim some animals are so sweet. They're just so happy to be there and to have the home with you that they don't wanna make any kind of special requests. So the two most, most common requests that they make of me when I tune into them is they want clean water. They, want their, they don't want scum in their water. They don't want algae in their water. So they want it to be nice and clean and fresh and, and maybe uh, attended to every day and no chemicals, no chlorine, no fluoride in their water. If you could, I mean, it's, they'll drink that stuff, just like giving it to your kids, they'll drink it, but it's better if they can drink the water, water that's healthier for them, more alkaline, and things like that. They just said, thank you. Um, and they don't want a bunch of drool in their water and they don't want food kibble in their water, you know, just, you know, they're not, too, they're not as picky about their food. When it comes to food, food is more about flavor for them. They really are into the flavor thing. Uh, they don't really care what you give them. They're just like, you just give me the flavor. So, um, oh, I'm also going to repel them from the green stuff. Okay. And also I'm going to tell them if a stranger gives something to you, like over a fence or, or if, if, if you come across anything that, that was left there, it seems to be left there for you instinctively, don't fall for it. I'm going to shake you and say, see, not to peep him on. Okay, maybe, maybe sniff at it and bring the attention to your owner so your owner sees it but walk away from it, get away from it, and don't, don't fall for the trap. It could be a trap of a bad human being who's trying to hurt you or harm you. They're like, oh, okay. Come on, man, take and say she and say, hey, hey, let me, man, hey. Okay, some of the wild animals are like, yeah, we find that a lot. We find a lot of stuff left over. Come on, she can say, well, they're not necessarily trying to harm you guys. That more happens to domestic animals for the most part. But you shouldn't be eating anything that, you know, human anyway. I mean, unless the, your owner is giving it to you and they, and they're doing it out of love. Okay. The other request that they make is a lot of you don't realize your animals are cold. So a lot of animals, like especially older, as they get older, their circulation isn't the same and they tremble, they get really cold. And the owners are just seem to be oblivious sometimes that they, that they need warmth. So if your if your animal is kind of cold to touch when you go to pet them, they may have um, a circulation problem. They may not be as able to warm their own body up like they used to be. So put a little heating pad underneath or, or a nice big um, fluffy bunchy blanket that they could lay in, um, you know, something like something like that. Um, and cat, they, the cats just said they like to be up high too. Um, if, if you have a mixed home like of cats and dogs, it's a good idea to have shelves all up around really high in your living room to where the, the cats can go completely across the bottom floor or the living room or your, your main living area or space and be up high and just watch from a bird's eye view without any kind of threat to them being hurt by the dogs down below or whatever chaos is going down below. Um, also, it's a good idea to have a cat enclosure, like a cat patio that's all screened in so they can be out in nature, but yet not, you know, you could have like an in and out little gate in your window of a guest room or something like that so that they can just get out the window. And then um, it, they should have a nice big area to spend time outside totally safe from predators or anything like that. Um, clean out their you know, feces on a regular basis, whether they be dogs or cats or whatever they are. Um, yeah. Anything else you guys want to mention? Try to be patient and understanding and know that, you know, if your animal is acting a way that you, that's really irritating to you, you are the one not doing enough, not doing the proper training. Now put it on yourself. 
because if you change your behavior and learn to watch their body language and to get them, you know, each cat should have their own litter box. Like you should seriously look into, yeah, everything aligning really beautifully. If you guys can care enough about your animal to learn all about all that you possibly can do tons of research on your animal. Um, and they will really, really appreciate it. Don't put it on your animal. You're not, your animal is not the problem you are. So make a commitment, make a commitment and have faith that your animal, that you and your animal can turn this around and then do what you can to um, lay down that burden and, and help the issue so that, um, so it can work out for all of you living in the same space and happily and harmoniously. And just be sensitive when you, when you go to, to be upset or anything like that, just like you would with kids. You don't want to, you know, cause a scene right in front of your kid to where your kid feels uncertain about you or feel scared, you know. Um, pay attention to how your animal's reacting to what it is that you're doing and, and make sure you're looking out for them. You remove them from the situation, put them in another room. It's more peaceful and quiet while you're fighting or whatever, whatever or talk to your animal and be like, this isn't about you, just so you know. And and that from your heart and they'll and they'll get the message it's not that they understand english you could be speaking any other language and they're still going to understand because you're speaking from the heart and they're getting the the gist and the vibration of it and the idea telepathically okay so <laughs> hopefully hopefully this this some of this will help um uh and i hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day and i'll talk to you next time one of these ideas come to me all right. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in getting a reading, you can check out my services at amysatori.com forward slash services. You can also join me on Patreon, where I do a monthly energies reading, pick a deck, messages from spirit, and more. Subscribe to me on alternative channels such as BitChute, Brand New Tube, Huge Tube, and the Collective Super Channel if you want to be sure we stay connected. Feel free to follow me on Instagram or reach out on Telegram as well. If you're interested in some great health boosting products I'm a huge fan of, please enter the URL below in your browser for more information. Also, check for the latest updates in the description of my videos as I try to keep them up to date. Thank you so much and have yourself a beautiful day.